My name is Edward Burnton. I'm the medical director at Hanal Biopharma. I'm delighted to be here at the OIS to present our recent clinical data with HL036 for the treatment of dry eye disease. This is the standard caveat about forward-looking statements as Hanal is a publicly traded company. Hanal Biopharma is a mid-sized Korean company with 330 employees and annual revenue of about $84 million U.S. It manufactures and markets both OTC and RX products in Korea. Over the past 15 years, Hanal has focused on the development of novel biologics addressing unmet needs in immunology, oncology, and ophthalmology. This has led to two new partnerships and two new products in clinical trials. HL161 is an anti-FC RN antibody. It's indicated for a variety of autoimmune diseases with pathologic autoantibodies. These include pemphigus, myasthenia gravis, and neuromyelitis optica, as well as a variety of orphan diseases which represent unmet medical needs. This has been licensed out to Royvant Sciences for development in the U.S. and Europe and to Harbor Biomed for development in China. The drug I'm going to speak to today, HL036 ophthalmic solution, is an anti-TNF treatment for inflammatory disease of the eye. This has been licensed out to Harbor Biomed for development in China. I'm going to describe the, complete, uh, the results of phase two trials recently completed in dry eye disease and um, our plans for a phase two dry eye disease study in China conducted by our partner Harbor Biomed. This is a brief overview of the Hanal R&D pipeline. Note that HL036 has been developed for dry eye disease in the U.S. in partnership with Daiwun Pharmaceuticals. TNF is known to cause inflammation in a variety of syst systemic diseases sent, such as rheumatoid arthritis. It's also a key mediator in inflammatory disease of the eye, including non-infectious uveitis, wet AMD, and diabetic retinopathy, as well as the late phase response in allergic conjunctivitis. HL036 was developed specifically for topical use. An anti-TNF antibody was engineered to create an anti-TNF peptide which bound, to the T bound TNF with high affinity. This fragment was optimized for resistance to proteases and strong TNF neutralizing activity. The characteristics of the final product include enhanced ocular penetration due to its small size, high stability, and strong neutralizing activity against TNF. When it's administered topically, there's minimal systemic exposure to the product. Before we introduce the US Phase II results with HL036, I would like to briefly describe the methodology used, the controlled adverse environment model. This model was invented by an ophthalmology CRO, Aura. And uh, as experts know, dry eyes dry eye patients are very heterogeneous and both signs and symptoms can be extremely variable across time points. This is an adverse ocular surface challenge involving humidity, temperature, high airflow, continuous visual tasking to provoke dry eye disease symptoms and signs. Patients tend to fall into one of three categories. They either get an exacerbation of symptoms following exposure to the chamber, an exacerbation of signs, or an exacerbation of both signs and symptoms, as seen in the red circle. In order to evaluate the effect of a novel therapy on both signs and symptoms in a small phase two study, the study is enriched for patients who respond with a significant change in both signs and symptoms to a 90-minute CAE exposure. Among these patients who are enrolled in the trial, they can be further divided in those who are quite reactive to an environmental stress and meet the sign and symptom endpoints with 20 minutes or less exposure. And then the slower responders who quali qualify between 20 and 90 minutes of exposure in the chamber. This shows the design schematic for the 036 phase two trial. In this randomized placebo-controlled trial, 
150 patients were randomized into three groups, which received either placebo or low and high concentrations of HL036 applied topically twice daily for eight weeks. There was a two-week placebo run-in, since the placebo effect can be very marked in dry eye disease patients. And in addition to the normal screening criteria to uh, enroll a, peri a, a panel of moderate to severe eye disease patients, patients had to qualify for inclusion by having a significant increase following chamber exposure in the inferior corneal staining score, a sign, and the ocular discomfort score, a composite score for symptoms. These utilized zero to five uh, proprietary scores by aura. At the end of the study, the primary efficacy endpoints were also the inferior corneal staining score for sign and the ocular discomfort score, although secondary endpoints included Schirmer test, tear film breakup time, and daily diary symptom scores. In this small study, we demonstrated that HL036 could significantly improve both sign and symptom scores. As shown on the left, the, the change from pre to post CAE challenge in the inferior corneal staining score was significantly improved with HL036 at the higher concentration versus placebo at both four and eight weeks. Um, this confirms the protective effect of the treatment against acute ocular surface damage during conditions of environmental stress, as, um, as, as mimicked by the CAE challenge. On the right, we have the symptom improvement. Using the ODS scale, we can see that uh, significant changes were, early, were present as early as one week in this composite symptom score and were sustained through the end of the study at week eight. This data was confirmed by trends in the visual analog symptom scores, in particularly the effects on burning, itching, and pain as reported by patients. At, uh, this is the data from day 57. In a post hoc analysis, we evaluated how the treatment responses might vary between patients who were more rapidly reactive to the CAE challenge and those who were slow responders. We noted that symptom responses to treatment differed dramatically between these groups. Roughly 40% of the patients were rapidly reactive to the CAE exposure. And in this subgroup, shown on the left, the improvement with treatment was highly significant from as early as two weeks of treatment. And um, these are the diary scores um, summarized by week for burning and stinging. Uh, across the duration of the study. This underscores the diversity of the dry eye disease population and its effect on response measures with different treatment interventions. Both concentrations of active drug were well tolerated with no significant or serious TAEs. All the ocular adverse events were mild to moderate. Importantly, using a drop comfort scale from zero to 10 measured at one minute after installation, the active drug was no more uncomfortable, or I should say equally comfortable, as placebo, and using historical controls as artificial tears. The ease and comfort of application is felt to be important for long-term patient compliance with topical treatments such as this, and can be expected to increase patient compliance with the twice a day regime. So to summarize, this appears to be a promising candidate for dry eye disease. There's significant improvements demonstrated in both sign and symptoms over the course of an eight week study. And there's fast onset of action with symptom improvement in as little as one week and sign improvement by four weeks, which contrasts with the label claims of some dry eye disease products which meet their primary endpoints after six or um, um, th three, three or six months of exposure. It was well tolerated with minimal adverse events and it's comfortable upon installation, which should encourage patient compliance. 
So the drug has successfully completed its phase two study and is ready to initiate a phase three in the first quarter of 2019 in the U.S. And phase three top line data should be available by the end of 2019. The drug substance, I should add, produced in E. coli has low cost of goods and excellent long-term stability. One side note about potential other indications for tenfen or SEP, the active anti-TNF moiety or drug substance in this product. Um, HL189 is being developed for intervitreal injection to place, uh, to treat um, posterior segment and retinal disease such as non-infectious uveitis and perhaps DME patients uh, failing anti-VEGF therapy. Additionally, a concentrated formulation to give higher exposure in the front of the eye has been studied to see whether it can be effective in some posterior segment diseases, um, and these are both still in the non-clinical phase. So thank you for your attention. For this phase three ready product, Hanal is seeking partners to co-develop HL036 across global markets. If you have any further questions, please contact us via one of the two emails on this presentation slide. Thank you very much.